Hi, welcome to Digital Yacht How To Video Series. In today's video, I'm going to be looking at tidal planning on our Smart Attract 2014 navigation program. So let's run the program. Now, the tide data here comes straight from the Navionics chart cartridge, and there's both tidal height and tidal flow data stored on the cartridge. Um, let's just accept that. So, what can we do with the tidal data? Well, um, what we can do is go to the tides menu and we can select show tides and it will then show uh, all of the uh, tidal flows that have been taken from the uh, British Admiralty charts. Um, now what you can do is you can either show them as they were shown on the in the positions on the actual original paper charts and these are often have been picked by the hydro because of navigational importance, so for instance at the entrance to a harbour, uh, coming here through the needles, um, but sometimes it's quite useful to have a, uh, more points and what uh, Smart Track does is actually interpolates between the different um, uh, control points and actually will allow you to have a grid of points shown. So here you can see the um, uh, a lot more tidal arrows. Um, and some of these will be the original reference points and some will be uh, interpolated points between. Um, so there's quite a lot of mathematics going on behind the scenes to create those. Um, each arrow uh, has a, a size which did, um, in magnitude of this, i.e. the flow strength of the of the uh, the water. So in this case here it would be two knots and also the arrow shows the direction of, of the, the tidal flow. So you can see that at a glance you've got quite a strong uh, flow of tide 1.8 up through approaching the needles uh, inshore it's only 0 0.7 knots um, so for uh, for just general cruising or for racing yachtsmen there's a lot of useful tidal data um, shown there on the by smarter track on the charts so that's the tidal flows um, I'll go back to the reference points um, you can actually also step through, um, so you can actually get a feel for what the tide's going to be doing in one hour's time, two hours time, three hours time. And if you know that you're going to be at a particular, or you hope to be at a particular uh, point at a particular time, you can actually in here set the time. So if I think I'm going to be getting to the, I don't know, uh, just off Bembridge at say, um, uh, Let's put a time there. So I think I'm going to be uh, approaching Benbridge about 2300 hours. Uh, I hit OK now. And the tide now it will show us that the tide's going to be firmly against us if we're approaching uh, from here. Um, as we're coming into Benbridge, it's going to be about 2.6 knots of tide against us. Um, so, you know, lots of calculations that can be done. Um, you can also uh, bring up the sun rise and uh, sunset and uh, times here um, and you, again you can change the, the date that you want to know the sunrise and sunset times um, so that's the, the tidal um, flows if you want to know the tidal heights for instance if we want to know what the tidal height will be at Benbridge um, we can right click on the little tidal diamond symbol there uh, and go object information and now that gives us uh, for today. That's giving us the uh, time of and uh, of low tide, high tide, um, and we can step through so we can see what that's going to be like tomorrow, uh, the next day. Um, so you know, lots of uh, uh, options there to to find out exactly what the tide the state of the tide is going to be um, when you're going to be next sailing. Um, and in this side, it's it's what what the tide's doing now. So the tide's um, increasing; uh, it's getting uh, going towards high tide, um, and it gives us the next high tide and the next low tide. So that's the tidal heights. So that's as far as displaying the the tides is concerned. But what about actually doing some uh, some passage planning and, and working out um, your uh, what effect the tide is going to have on a particular passage plan. Okay, well to do that we need to go to the route and the route library and I've created a route here uh, which I've called Paul to Cherbourg. I'm going to show that on the chart now. Um, and let's come out of there. And So I've just got a, a classic cross-channel 
root and let's just zoom out a bit so you can see where that goes from to um, so here we are so it's going from Paul to Cherbourg um, and just a very simple uh, two waypoint route and if I go to the properties of that route it gives me uh, bearing distance uh, you can also do a fuel calculation if you're going to be using a, a power boat but if you're going to be um, uh, going across you want to know what effect the tides are going to be uh, also you know, very useful um, function that can be done so if, if we say let's let's say we're going to um, uh, try and work out the optimum time to leave so we're going to be doing a, uh, a cross channel route uh, this weekend so let's say 2nd of November uh, we're going to estimate the speed of the, the vessel so let's say I don't know 4 knots average speed uh, actually I'll make that I'll make that a little bit faster because it will make the calculation a little bit quicker so we say 9 knots and we can actually calculate the plan now now this does take a little while to to calculate because what it's got to do is for each of the different hours it's going to do the uh, the tidal analysis and as you can see in this in this box below it's actually starting to fill all of those calculations in so uh, for instance here if we were to leave at midnight it would take us six hours and two minutes whereas if we left at two o'clock it would take us six hours ten um, and and you'll find for each of the different um, times it will calculate the the amount of time that you're going to be at, at sea and also give you your arrival time um, and this is taking into effect the the effect of the tides so we'll just wait for that to to finish uh, its calculation it does take quite a long time for this calculation because there's a lot of mathematics to be done um, and uh, it's got to calculate those tides across the full 56 nautical mile uh, route and it's gradually completing those while we're doing that what we'll do is I'll just move that to one side so what it will do is um, after it's finished doing all its calculations will be able to actually to tick this box here which will show the plan and it will actually show us the um, predicted uh, course through the water so it will actually show us a, you know, as, as we've been pushed so we will steer a, a fixed course but the tide will then push us off um, for a certain period of time and then it will start to the tide will turn and the, uh, the boat will then start to drift back onto to the, to the uh, ideal course it does take quite a while for this to be calculated uh, not the most scintillating of video footage but hopefully that will complete in a, in a few minutes and what this calculation will do is it actually will tell us the optimum departure time to, to spend the least amount of time at sea so there we go it's finished and it will there we go it's put here these four asterisks are showing the best time that it's calculated is only six hours at sea um, if we leave at uh, seven o'clock in the evening on Saturday um, so what we can do now is we can go back to the route plan details and um, create the plan based on leaving at uh, seven o'clock so we'll go in here so it's start date is Saturday um, and I'm going to set the start time as seven o'clock um, and recalculate plan there we go complete um, so that's estimated time of arrival is uh, 6.14 on Sunday and uh, what we've done there is uh, it's actually shown a, a later um, time because I didn't set the speed there to 9 so let me just re recalculate that there we go 6 hours so move that over there and we'll close that um, and there's the the time that it's calculated we'll 
hit OK there and now what we'll do is show plan on the chart so as you can see uh, because we're only at C for six hours um, it's actually only going to be um, pushing us off course um, there and that's our projected track through the water and then we need to what we'll need to do is then zoom into that and make sure that it's not taking us anywhere we don't want to go um, but as it's pretty open water there that should be a safe passage and that really is is smart tracks um, tidal planning um, shown there I mean you can do more complicated routes um, but I've just shown you there a, a typical cross-channel passage uh, and I hope you found that interesting. Alright, thanks very much for watching.